Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Transformational Talks. And today it's International Women in Engineering Day, and I'm quite fortunate uh, to be one of the engineers that are being celebrated today, and welcome to our shows. Uh, before we start, I would like to you know, to show some appreciation, especially to the Ministry of Education here in Zimbabwe for, you know, having programs that allow uh, young girls to take engineering, you know, the STEM programs. And I'd also like to, you know, appreciate um, STEM FEM, um, one of the <clears throat> that is... Um, run by Stelo Dube, and I would also want to appreciate OWSD, um, you know, compliments to the chairman engineer, Dr. Farirai. Um, and I also would want to, you know, appreciate women in engineering, uh, both the Zimbabwean chapter and the South African chapter for the initiatives that they do. I remember where I got this pink helmet, it was 2019, uh, they did a fellowship for young engineers. So it's something to be thankful to appreciate individuals. You know, we've got mentors, um, for example, engineer Masiazi, um, engineer Chukuru, there are a lot of, uh, especially women that I've worked with before, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's very okay. Uh, to appreciate their efforts so thank you so much and to those who are doing wherever they are thank you so much again for pushing the agenda of engineering and encouraging young women to participate uh, in the engineering programs um, so today I'm quite fortunate to be having um, there were supposed to be three but there are two amazing uh, women that I've managed to work with before. And they are also pioneering a lot of initiatives in the field of engineering. And to my viewers, to my first three viewers, welcome. Please feel free to comment, to tag, uh, to agree. You know, just feel free to engage in the conversation. So without wasting any time, I would like to add... my speakers for today and they are wearing their pink helmets <laughs> good evening engineer prudence and engineer bev welcome to our celebration for today uh, the international women engineering day and uh before we start as well i'd like to send my Apology from engineer Farai. Um, she has experienced something that was beyond your control. She wished she could have been here with us today, but oh well, at least uh, we still have got two amazing speakers that we can learn from today. Good evening, engineer Prudence and Beverly. Welcome to Transformational Talks. It's a platform for youth. Um, and today we are honored to be having you uh, as you are sharing your journey since today's title is Engineering Heroes. And for our first uh, viewer, Lu Lois, uh, thank you. And we see their blankets too. Yes, uh, it's called June. <laughs> <laughs> so to start, maybe I can begin with um, Engineer Prudence. You know, I shared your profile a few days back, but for the sake of those who hadn't seen the profile, maybe you can just tell us a little bit about yourself, who is Engineer Prudence, and why are you so excited to be here with us today? Oh, all right, and um, uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm really happy to be here tonight um, on this talk. In fact, I had been asked to come on board a long, long time ago, and I was always busy. So I decided hey, this time, let me just do it, because Nedi has done so much for us. And every time we ask her for something, she's always ready, you know. So I will just share a bit about myself, but um, Nedi knows that I talk too much. So she, she, she's allowed to just <laughs> say, OK, OK. <laughs> Oh, all right, so I'm engineer Prudence Kadebu. 
Um, I'm a software engineer by profession and um, a lecturer at the University of Zimbabwe. So I, I lecture in um, soft, software engineering, um, computer engineering, computer science, in fact, across the whole spectrum of the computing uh, discipline. But my, my main um, area is software engineering, actually, though I come also from a computer science background from my undergrad. So currently, I am a PhD scholar with Amit University in India. And uh, I'm hoping that I may be able to complete um, maybe in two months or so um, by God's grace. Um, I am involved in quite a lot of things, um, both from my work as well as in the community. I am really passionate about um, you know, reaching out to anyone in need, actually. Um, I've been very fortunate to have been a, a Tech Women Fellow, uh, which is a program that has taken me to the US. Um, from there, I did um, learn something, uh, a skill that is not really technical, but um, a skill which I believe um, has really helped a, a lot of uh, young girls, which is, um, uh, you know, just making a reusable sanitary way. Um, so it's, it's a skill which I, we, we've been going around, in, you know, um, imparting uh, on the, the, the girls in the schools. I've, I, I, we've pretty much gone around Zimbabwe when we did a pilot project, but even after we had um, received a grant from the US and it ran out, I was able to just continue. So it's really become more like a passion for me because uh, it was a platform where I could not just, you know, uh, train them on, on the reusable sanitary pad, but I could also have, you know, a, a, a chance to engage with them, to tell them about STEM, to tell them about, you know, uh, being an engineer and, and, and all that. And then also I, I'm involved in other things, like now, nowadays uh, I have a new passion, which is a solar training that we want to start. So it's really in the beginning, in the initial stages. And I'm hoping that is going to be something also very impactful. So I would say I'm more of a, a, a philanthropist at heart. I don't have money yet, but I believe when I, you know, the events open and I have more money, I will be able to do uh, more. But uh, really, I am a passionate software engineer. I love software engineering, actually. That's like my first passion. And then all these other things that I do in the community, I enjoy them thoroughly. I just love to be out there. I just love to, you know, connect with people. Yeah, I'm also a mentor. Maybe I've mentored you a, a, a few times, maybe, <laughs> or less. <laughs> yeah, I do have quite a number of people. I, I, I mentor in the university and in other spaces also. Yeah, I, I think for now I can end here. If you have other things that you might want to know about me, you can always uh, ask as, as we continue with the talk. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Prudence. Um, Engineer Bev, just a little bit about yourself. Your mic is on mute. <laughs> Thank you. 
but it's just those self esteem and confidence in whatever discipline um, those goals want to pursue. Um, and my students, I just had the opportunity to participate in the people and project uh, and uh, explain or uh, experience various companies in Silicon Valley. So the eye opening experience, I got to learn, I got to be mentored, um, and I'm also trying to say the same journey I was still in other things in Baghdad. I am secretary for the Women and Engineering Division. So this is an uh, organization or a group of women that have come together to provide a platform where we support each other in the engineering journey. Um, and, and that engineering journey starts in far back from being in high school. It's not bad. Yeah. Um, the, the audience are saying they cannot hear you clearly. <laughs> Um, maybe wise to are waiting for engineer Bev. Um, am I you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, that's... yes, now we can hear you clearly. All right, so should I start again? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All For right, so yeah. Um, okay. So you were still explaining about the tech women. I, I could hear you. Oh, on okay. My yeah, side. Yeah. So yeah, it's just, it was a program to learn um, and uh, we've brought some of those experiences back through women in engineering where we support each other. We're mentoring young children from uh, well primary uh, into high school through university level. And even once you've graduated and they're in the workplace as well, it's just a community to support, to help each other, give each other resources uh, and be each other's shoulder or helper or yeah, guide. So yeah, I guess I can add more as we go along. You know, at, at least I'm happy. You know, I've got two people that I know. Actually, it's more than two. Uh, we have gone for take women. I also want to apply for take women. Yeah, you um, maybe just yes, I should. I think I've got a greater chance of qualifying, mm -hmm. and who knows? <laughs> and we can endorse yeah. you as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. At least now I know I've got two reference letters. And to those who might be interested more about take women, please. Uh, Feel free to ask our guests. They have a better understanding of tech women. So maybe like moving forward, um, you know, you are still in engineering. Engineer Bev is also still in engineering as well. You know, so maybe I'll start with uh, Engineer Bev. You know, what, what has kept you going? Uh, you know, the fire, what kept the fire inside you burning? Because I, I know a lot of people, me included, is part of those people. You know, we, we studied engineering for four years. Then after four years, boom, you know, we're taking like a different, different route. So what has made you come this far and to continue pursuing engineering? Um, for me, it's the problem solving aspect of it. Uh, to be able to come up with solutions to problems. For me, that's where my fire comes from. Uh, and the fact that no two problems ever look the same. So they might seem similar, but they take different solutions. So it's just, it keeps me thinking outside the box or it keeps me going outside of the comfort zone. And I, I that's something I like. Um, I think when I was in high school, we were asked what do you want to do when you grow up or when you finish school. Uh, I, I definitely knew I didn't want a job that keeps me in one position every single day doing the same thing. So for me, engineering is something that's always changing and evolving and it's challenging me. And at the end of the day, I'm giving solutions. So that's my drive. So basically, you know, it's about um, having the adrenaline, you know, having being in an environment where it's it's dynamic and that is like constantly changing. You know, I feel like I can relate to that because you know, if you continue to do like one thing at a time, 
sometimes it becomes very monotonous. So for to those who want um, the adrenaline rush, uh, solving problems, engineering definitely is the right place for you. So engineer prudence, on your part, what has made you to go as far as doing a PhD in software engineering? Because looking at myself right now, the thought of doing a master's in any engineering field is something that is very, very far away from me. But, you know, as I'm talking to you right now, you are studying a PhD degree and you're about to finish uh, the PhD. So what has kept that fire burning inside of you to a point of wanting to know more to a PhD level? Thank you so much, uh, Neji, for this question. Uh, I, I would say um, <clears throat> to a greater extent, it's more like uh, what Engineer Bev has explained. Um, the aspect of uh, problem solving. I, I believe that um, being an engineer uh, means it's, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of uh, being a problem solver. It doesn't mean you're, you're a problem solver in, in software engineering or in civil engineering alone. In everything that you do, you can actually tell that engineer Bev is an engineer by the way she you know, uh, tackles uh, challenges. Whether it's in the family, it's in a social life, it's that kind of a thing. <laughs> is that, you know, you can just say this is an engineer because we are problem solvers. Many a times I hear people saying, yeah, no wonder why they call you engineer. And I'm not even doing a, a software engineering thing uh, when I do that sometimes. It's, it's, it's just, you know, a lifestyle. So I, I would say now um, on another uh, side, for me, it's really been about my background. It's, it's really been about um, trying to create that platform where somebody who's been, I mean, who's actually in the, um, the place that I've been before, I uh, can actually have somebody to look up to. They can actually have someone, uh, you know, who is going through what they are going through right now. Uh, coming from a place where I, I lagged in quite a lot of things, um, I remember there, there were times when I didn't even have uh, fees at some point, I had um, that beam, if you remember, like social uh, welfare initiative for paying fees for needy uh, kids. I actually had a part of my fees paid by beam, and then later on, I managed to get a, an A-level scholarship that was better. But uh, really, what I wanted to do is to say, I, I'm coming from the, the, you know, the ghetto. I come from Stumbiza, where, you know, people really don't expect, I mean, they don't look forward to something like this, that I want to be an engineer, I want to be a doctor, I want to be, you know, it's like when you're in the ghetto, you're just like everyone else. But somehow I felt like I needed to break out of there. I, I needed to really show somebody who is um, in that place to say that you can, you can be anyone that you want to be. You can reach, you know, any level that you want to reach as long as you have that fire within you. So going for the PhD for me is not even exciting, really. I mean, for me, as a person, I, I, I you know, it's, it's really stressful. I mean, all the study and I, I have to be a superwoman, I have to be an octopus, you know, having all these eight hands, I have to be touching there, doing all this. It's quite a lot and it's heavy on me. And most of the time, I, I, I remember telling someone that I, do, I, do, I can't even find time to shampoo my hair. And then later on, she was asking me after about two weeks, did you manage to, you know, find time to shampoo your hair? Actually, yeah, so it's really that, you know, where, where you are, you just want to show someone that even from the ghetto, you can actually be a PhD in computer science and engineering. You are a woman, you can, you can just do all the things that the others are doing. So that's really um, the thing that has uh, really got me going. Uh, to say that I can attain any position that I, I, I tell myself I want to attain, if I really focus on that. So it, it's really about the, the next person to just inspire, to be the role model, to just show them that it's possible. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Um, you know, I also grew up in Chitungiza. I went there for, oh. for my primary and I feel like I can relate to most of the stuff that you are saying. And uh, well done uh, for taking up the task to be an inspiration to young men or even young women out there. So my next question is, since we are still on the topic of, you know, keeping the fire burning, what are your words of encouragement to 
those young girls or even the young boys watching, we, we have now decided to pursue other things and, you know, not to continue pursuing engineering. Uh, over to you, Engineer Bev. Um, I would say go for your dreams, right? Uh, sometimes the going does get tough, but you need to know why you initially started and what it is you want to get out of it. So uh, especially nowadays, there are some, some jobs or tasks or quick money-making schemes that might seem more enticing than the engineering journey. But I think uh, you, I, well, I feel I get more fulfillment through my journey in engineering. So for whoever is looking to say, um, I need inspiration to keep at it or to, to try it or to start, it's more what are your dreams and um, what do you want to achieve? Let that be um, what keeps you going. Because in anything you do, I think there'll always be ups and downs. But the, the end goal is what keeps you going. You keep your eyes on the price. And yeah, if you fall, you get back up and you try again. And the nice thing about it is this is why we're building these communities, especially for the women, to say that you're not joining alone. And the challenges we face. So personally, my my first engineer, woman engineer, I met her a year after graduating. That was in 2011. So now we're trying to at least have women out there, even for the, the girls to see at high school level, so that you know that it's not a journey that's unique to you. It's not a journey that has uh, obstacles or challenges you face alone. It's what you experience is not... Um, it's not unheard of. You you have a community that supports you. If you face challenges or you just want someone to talk to or you just want advice or help, there's a community to turn to. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, uh, Engineer Bev. You actually mentioned a very key point. Uh, you spoke about mentorship. So Engineer Prudence, what's your take on mentorship? Do you give credit to mentorship to, to be where you are today? And would you encourage people to take on mentorship? Precisely, Nedi. Uh, I wouldn't have achieved all the things that I've achieved had it not been uh, for people who really held my hand. In fact, I so much believe, not just in, in that sort of mentorship where um, there is somebody who is uh, older, maybe an older mentor, a more experienced. Mentorship for me started even with a peer. So I really believe in peer mentorship as well as the other conventional uh, type of uh, mentorship. I, I would say um, being somebody who really suffered quite a lot uh, from a low self-esteem from the, the background that I was trying to explain earlier. Uh, I have had people like uh, the engineer you just mentioned, uh, Nedi, engineer Masiazi. She's really been a, a pillar of strength to me. Um, I would say she's the, the, the first person who really uh, told me that uh, I, I just needed to be myself. I used to struggle so much with, you know, my spoken English wasn't good enough. And I always tried to stay in the background because I was afraid to even, you know, say a word because I'm thinking I'm just going to break the English and people, you know, laugh at me and all that. But um, Matthias kind of helped me to, you know, to build that self-esteem to begin with before I even went for Tech Women. So that's why I, I value peer mentorship a, a lot. Because I, I remember when she was encouraging me and I was like, hey, would I be able to, you know, to, to complete that application? It's so tough and what, what. So she just said to me, Prudence, just be yourself. J just express yourself the way that you are. Don't talk about anything that you are not. Just be you. And exactly those ways is what has made me to be where I am today. Because even when I was applying for Tech Women, that's exactly what I did. I didn't fake anything. I just e expressed myself just like that. And, and, and I managed to, 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 you know, to, to succeed in that. So I really believe in mentorship quite a lot. And also even when I, I got that uh, mentorship uh, opportunity, I, I, I had a mentor at Twitter. I was a Twitter for my, my Tech Women mentorship. So my mentor, Diana, and also Kiko Smith was the other mentor from Twitter. 
So they taught me quite a lot. And uh, most of the things that I'm doing right now, even in my position, uh, since, since I'm now heading a department, the things that I'm doing now, I've had a department before uh, from my time at HIT, but I can actually see that I, I'm a different person. I'm now a different leader than the one that I was before because of that mentorship. They taught me quite a lot, including, I, I can just say a few of the things uh, they taught me in terms of leadership that I, I, I needed, you know, to, to be a leader who could uh, listen, you know, a, a leader who listens. That's number one. They told me that as long as you are, you are a leader who cannot listen, then you can never make a good leader. They, they told me that I have to, you know, be patient. I have to um, allow everyone to express themselves. This, this was a very key thing. In, in fact, uh, Diana said that as long as your goals are set and everyone knows what you are working towards, you know, what you are working towards achieving, then you should never worry about what each person is doing. That, that was very key. Even today, that's what I'm now applying. You don't have to be on every person's case like this. What, 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 what? Allow people to express themselves. Allow people to be creative. As long as you're on their back like this and you're not even part of the team yourself, it means they, they will feel like, you know, you, you, are, you are overly controlling them for nothing. So... Really, I, I learned quite a lot from these uh, women. They taught me about being tolerant. They taught me about, you know, uh, being able to, to, to be inclusive a, 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 as a leader. Because people are going to come from different backgrounds. People are going to come with different experiences. There are some who will be more competent in one thing, while they probably might lack in another. So all that was something which I felt I needed to learn. But sometimes, you know, when you're a leader, you, you sometimes feel like the whole world is against you. You feel like maybe people are not sharing the vision with you and, and things like that. But you need to find a way of, you know, trying to make sure that everyone is, is on the same page. Everyone is, you know, um, you know, moving with the same vision, you know. So it, it's something that I wouldn't have uh, known about uh, until I got mentored. So for me, there's nothing that can beat mentorship, actually. Because that's how we can have um, that opportunity to pull along somebody so that they don't have to make the same mistakes that we did, you know? No need to reinvent the wheel, isn't it? So we, we can allow somebody to explore new avenues while we support them. We tell them about our experiences, what challenges we have faced and how we have been able to overcome. I, I think for now I can stop here, Ned. You know me. I can go on and on. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Prudence. You know, I think you you know that mentorship it's a topic that I'm very passionate about, mm -hmm. and I'm happy that you've um, explained it well. And to those who are looking for mentors, I believe Engineer Prudence and Engineer Bev, they are here to listen to our stories. And you know, when you're giving giving examples of mentorship, you spoke about leadership. So, Engineer Bev. Uh, well, what's your take on leadership, uh, especially when it comes to women in STEM? Because I've realized that most women in STEM, they tend to shy away from leadership positions, especially in the workplace. So what's your take on leadership? Well, I, uh, I think leadership puts you in a position of spotlight. Um, that's probably why women would then tend to shy away from such positions. Um but I think it's also a time to shine, uh, shine for yourself and for your team, right? So it's not necessarily that you have to go at it alone. You're working with a team, but you're probably the, the engines behind that team. You, you give them the drive to go forward. Um, you give direction. And like um, Prudence said, it's not necessarily that you need to micromanage people. Um, probably lay out tasks. Um, let people understand what the deliverables that are required are and let people have freedom to innovate and to, to find ways to deliver where you want them to deliver. Uh, so, yeah, leadership is, it, it is about leading, but it's not necessarily that you need to carry the load alone. You're working with a team. That's my thoughts. Thank you so much, Engineer Bev, and to our viewers who are, who are listening to us today. 
you know, leadership, especially like young women and girls, they shouldn't be afraid to take leadership. And for me, I feel like leadership starts from as early as being elected as a prefect or even as a head girl. That's where you learn the basics of, of, of being a leader. And, you know, Engineer Bev, you actually mentioned about being in a spotlight and Engineer Prudence also spoke about self-doubt. So Engineer Prudence, maybe you can explain to us how then did you manage to work around self-doubt and low self-esteem? Because I believe a lot of us are suffering from that, considering you're in a place where boys and men are dominating and they are doing better than you. But at the same time, you're supposed to be at a place of leadership, but you've got lots of self-doubt and self-esteem. Thank you so much, Nedi. This is a very, um, what can I say? It's an, it's an area that really is close to my heart uh, because I've really suffered uh, from most of uh, these um, uh, challenges to do with uh, self-doubt, uh, to do with uh, limiting beliefs. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, that uh, for me, it, it has mainly been uh, low self-esteem, uh, lack of uh, confidence. Um, and, and then also um, that, that aspect of, um, okay, I am a woman when I get to a, a place, like uh, I have shared before uh, on another forum, uh, where I've, I've spoken about uh, how I started at my first, very first job, where somebody um, actually said it that you have hired a woman again. Uh, in fact, we were two women who had been hired, actually, and they thought in, in ICT and you are expecting somebody who is very competent, and now they bring two, two females. I heard these words, and really, I, I can tell you that um, the reason why I, I've really you know, uh, fought, the reason why I've really uh, strove to be where I am is also partly because of the failures that I've um, uh, faced, the challenges that I have faced. So for me, whenever I felt this uh, self-doubt, uh, feeling like, okay, maybe I'm not good enough, but somebody has said something. Uh, usually it emanates from that, that someone has said something about you. And then that's when you now uh, think that uh, you doubt yourself. You start thinking, ah, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe they've seen something in me uh, to that effect, you see. So what I've done is I've tried to, to shift every element of, you know, um, doubt that I've had about myself or every negativity uh, that I've experienced on the positive side. That's what I've done. In fact, if I'm going to, in, in, in the future, maybe I'll, I'll come again on your, on your show, Lady, where I will talk more about how you can turn um, lemons into lemonade. In fact, I would love to share so much. Uh, about that area, okay? But really, I would say for me, what I've uh, managed to do is to really search within me. Uh, I've really gone through through my mentorship. I managed to learn more about self-awareness. I, I realized that uh, the reason why sometimes I end up doing some of the things that I do and sometimes the reason why I end up even failing is because of these um, uh, issues to do with limiting beliefs. And uh, I felt that with the self-awareness uh, training that I, I, I got, I was able to really do more of a sort of analysis of myself. What are really my weaknesses and wh where are they coming from, okay? What are my strengths? So wh what I did was more like to work more on my strengths so that I really rise above, you know? And then on, on the weaknesses, I, 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 I try to take it gradually, slowly by slowly, you know, trying to work on that. And it really worked for me because I, I, today I, I, I would say some people actually think that I'm the most confident person, <laughs> but deep down inside I still have that, you know, a loss of esteem somehow. But when I speak to people, it's, it's like, oh, I am so sure of myself, even with things that I don't know about. I've learned that trick that, you know, even when you are not even sure of yourself, Sometimes you don't have to pretend, you know, you, you, I know it all. What, what I do is, if I have to just go and ask, I ask for help. <laughs> if I know somebody knows something that I don't know, I, I just go and ask for help. Can you help me, please? Something that I can do myself, if I can learn it, I just learn it. And, and maybe sometimes I, I, I've not been able to do it so, so, so well, you know, and I end up, you know, uh, doubting myself even more or feeling a bit of um, 
on the crash side and on the low side. But once I learn this thing and I come back now, you know, with more confidence, I'm able to convince people and all that. So really, with the aspect of uh, self-doubt, I, I've learned that it's, it's, it's more about finding that inner strength yourself and finding those things that can uh, help you to really, you know, um, what can I say, get in touch with yourself, you know? Because for some of these things, I don't think you, 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 you need somebody else to tell you that, you know, you're suffering from these things. The best way that you can rise above that situation, the best way that you can rise above these challenges is when you face them yourself. If it's fears, you face them head on. If it's um, any of those limiting beliefs, you really confront them and say, okay, I, I, I'm suffering from this thing. What, what can I do? Then you work on it. So that's what I've done. Where I've always, you know, gone to the back, you know, trying to always do things, you know, in the background. That's me, actually. I, I prefer to work in the background. I do a lot of running around, and a lot of people now know it. I, I'm, I'm quite a strategist, but I can never go in the front. That's me. It's always been like that. So I, I'm, quite, I, I'm actually working on that. But the reason why I'm saying it is because I managed to do that sort of analysis. You know, to, to, to be aware of myself, to know really where I like, well, what are my, are, my, are my real weaknesses, you know? And then from there, I've been able now to work on that. I, I think I can uh, leave it here for now. Thank you so much, um, Engineer Prudence. Um, I think for me, one of the toughest things that I have to do, like literally every day, is to do that sort analysis, you know? To actually admit that this is a point of weakness and the moment you identify that point of weakness i liked the part where you said you know you look at the root cause and the moment you're able to identify the root cause that means you turn that weakness into a strength thank you so much for 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 that contribution and uh engineer bev uh, how do you think society family and friends can help especially like women in the engineering field to continue pursuing their dreams? So friends, family, society are those people around you. And um, the more they give you a positive voice, um, it, it kind of, I don't want to say it boosts your confidence per se, but it gives you energy to keep going. Uh, because if you can have people moving in the same direction as you are going, it makes the journey easier. But another reality is it's not always going to be, that's an ideal situation. And unfortunately, not everyone is going to always walk in the same direction as you, right? So you, I mean, if you've got a supportive spouse, a supportive family, it makes life easier, right? Um, so it's also about maybe getting people to buy into what you love. Why is it that you're an engineer? Um, why do you want them to understand what you do? That could be a way to, to bring them on your side so that they also then give you support so that you're all pulling in one, one direction. What you don't want is people to be pulling in different directions. Um, I think there are many reasons why people would pull in different directions, but uh, it definitely makes life easier if you're all pulling in one direction. Why? Because as a woman, you already have so many roles and hats. Like Prudence was saying that she feels like an octopus trying to have so many hands to do so much. You're a mother, you're a wife, you're, a, uh, you're at work, you're a student. Um, you, you're still a woman at, at the end of the day as well. You want to do your hair, you want to do this and that. Mm -hmm. So at least if you've got people on your side, right, you can at least say, okay, I have my afternoon off because I want to go get my hair done. Someone could say I'm taking the kids or someone could say I'm going to help with the cooking or someone would say, oh, okay, uh, at work, uh, can we exchange duties? Can you take over for me today? I cover you tomorrow or something like that. But it's only possible if, People understand. So I think support of family or friends or the people who surround you, it's very important because it makes the journey easier. Um, I, I would say you asked a question earlier about why we stay or why is it we're still in engineering and others left. I think 
that issue of support could be a reason why others leave because it becomes too much. I mean, there are some times where you have projects at work and the project works with a deadline, right? And the client will pay mm -hmm. based on have you delivered the product. Now imagine you have to work with a deadline, but at home they're expecting you to cook, right? Or you have to work in a, with a situation where if you're not home by five, there's trouble. But you've got a deadline that has to be fulfilled. So is that you really need support? So I, I'll say yes, you need support. Whoever is around you, whether you have to convince them or bribe them now, that those are logistics that have to be worked on. But support of the community really, really does um, make a difference. I think it's also seen like now probably more women are in engineering today than ever before, also because society has now come to understand that women are just as capable as the men in engineering. In some cases, you actually find in schools when they're studying, the girls do better. Even in the workplace, the ladies do better, right? So it's also that change where society now accepts and says, oh, okay, so we've got women. They're doing the job. And that's just the bottom line. So support goes a really long way in making the women in engineering journey better. Thank you so much uh, for elaborating more on that one. And to our viewers, uh, please uh, make sure you're in the same direction with your family, your friends. So at the end of the day, you know, it's also one of the reasons why you continue pursuing the profession of engineering so maybe just to make this one fair you know we've got audience uh, our viewers were commenting in the comment section so i feel like mm -hmm. it's high time we start engaging them so there's a comment from gamchai biza she said happy in international women in engineering day looking good in them pink helmets thank you so much kabu and uh there's also a comment from tinashe Leroy kunaka Question for Engineer Nyakutsikwa. Has the ZIE been doing any outreach and awareness programs to young women and girls in vulnerable groups of society to encourage them and impart them with skills to take up programs in STEM? Uh, I would say yes, they have. Um, just that of late, it's probably not been as much activity as what probably was there before uh, because of the restricted uh, movement and activities that are there now because of issues of COVID. But I'll say, yes, ZRAI has been doing activities uh, through its division, uh, Women in Engineering, and also through the different areas. Uh, activities such as uh, career guidance, so whether it's um, going to schools, like maybe when schools host career guidance events, we send representatives there, uh, or actually hosting events. So one of the biggest events that was done was the one with support from the South African organization Women's, where there was, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, with, the, mm -hmm. with the helmet, um, there were activities for high school girls and also activities for university uh, students. Um, so activities are done. I'll probably say a lot more has to be done, definitely, to, to take these activities uh, to more schools, more institutions in the country. But the thing is also uh, some of these activities are done uh, as volunteer work. So we need more hands on deck, right? Um, I could be able, maybe the team I have is able to cover five, six schools in Harare. We need more people to engage in their different areas to be able to also then make more impact. So in as much as I'd want to, to impact a community in maybe Kariba or Bait Bridge, for me, it's a distance far. I'm far from there. So we need to do more to engage the women in engineering who are in those areas so that they are also active in their communities. But definitely work is being done. Uh, progress right now is slow, but we are trying to also then see if we are now in a new normal, how can we continue making impact in the societies? Thank you so much for that, uh, Engineer Bev. Tinashe, I hope you answered. And maybe just to add on, 
you know, we, we need more hands. Um, there, there's one thing that I like, uh, for example, I think engineer prudence, you know, Shingima Randuri, you know, mm-hmm. she, she always does initiatives to, to, to those kids who are less privileged. So maybe it's a challenge to you, Tinashe. It's something that you can start doing also in your community and to those who are viewing because I believe that everyone has got a contribution and everyone has got a role to play in order for those children or those girls who are coming from vulnerable groups so that they also benefit from these initiatives. Uh, Sorry, and there was also a comment. Add something? Yes. Uh, it's okay. Say, uh, and Tinashe, right? Say uh, yes. a person identifies a school or a community they want people to come and address. It's also okay because it actually makes the planning easier for us. You can simply say, um, I'm looking for a group of engineers, women engineers, to come and address. I've got students who are interested in hearing or talking to or just seeing women in engineering. Can you come? And then we organize people to come. I think it, it's also a, uh, it's a two-way thing. We organize, but the community is free to engage and say, please come. Um, I think that actually makes more impact because we cover more ground that way as we are closer to the people with the need. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Tinashe, I hope you are listening. And to our viewers, I hope you also take advantage of that. Then there's a comment from Chipo uh, Mataka. She said, happy International Women Engineering Day. There's a, also a comment from Lois Goodke. Focus is key. Well done, Prudence. There's also a comment from Agnes Mabinya. True mentorship is very important. Uh, there's also a comment from Rumbi Mucheni. I'm really getting gems here. Thank you. I hear take women coming up quite often. May you please shed more light on that, please. Uh, who is willing to shed more light on take women, engineer prudence or engineer Beth? Or I give each 30 seconds, yeah. 30 seconds. <laughs> so I'll start with engineer prudence. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Nedi. Uh, so we. In fact, I, I can just say Take Women is um, a, a program, it's a mentorship program actually, um, which identifies uh, emerging leaders in uh, STEM. Uh, so what I will share is uh, according to how it happened for me during my time. So it uh, took five women from Zimbabwe during my year, which was 2018. So in, in our cohort, there was myself, a software engineer, there was one uh, physicist from NAS. There was one um, medical laboratory scientist. Uh, there was also a paint um, chemist and then a biotechnologist. She's um, at uh, Tongat. So that, that's how it is for, for tech women. It takes uh, women from STEM. So in my age, it was five women. So it takes women from about, uh, I think now, maybe 25 countries or so in uh, sub-Saharan uh, Africa, uh, Middle, I think Middle East as well, BEF, that's correct, right? Yeah, the countries like uh, uh, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, all these uh, countries. And then um, they will converge um, in, in, in San Francisco for five, uh, in fact, it's um, four weeks in San Francisco and then they will go to Washington DC for the final week. Yeah, so basically it's a mentorship program and um, when you are successful in it, you are attached at a company uh, in, in San Francisco. In fact, you actually choose which, can, which company you want to go to. I think they'll give you probably a selection of three or so. And then that one of the companies will also just select you. So for me, it was a Twitter. I had not even applied for it. Uh, in fact, I thought it was far-fetched. <laughs> so I had applied for other you know, com- uh, companies, but I was uh, selected there. So wh- what it does is uh, they, w- they will teach you all the- some of these skills that we were just explaining, you know, issues to do with the self-awareness, a-, a lot of things. They will be taking you around different companies. Uh, you get to hear from other STEM women in that um, area, in the in the San Francisco Bay area, the Silicon Valley area. So it's more like um, identifying you as an emerging leader 
and then giving you a platform to learn from other women who are also in the same field and then uh, something that will help you to grow to you know uh, overcome all these challenges that I've been talking about these limiting beliefs where you've been um, uh, you know uh, struggling with loss of esteem they help you also to um, go above that and then also they will attach you now in companies so for three weeks I was attached to Twitter so there you work with a mentor my mentor was uh, the, the head of the twist team that is for Android and iOS she was more more like the project manager for these teams so for me I had indicated that I wanted to learn more in the project management um, area that's why she selected me so I, I got to have a feel of how they work there, how they manage their teams, how they manage the, 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 the project. That's why I was talking more about the leadership uh, aspect of it. And then you, you might also get a chance to do a project within that um, uh, the three weeks. They can just assign you to do something. So it, it was like that. For me, it was more like just trying to uh, analyze the engagements for, you know, tweet in Africa and, and, and stuff like that, which countries had, you know, the highest uh, engagements and, and you know, it was fun actually. But for me, um, I found the analytics part more challenging because I had not really uh, gotten, you know, uh, the aim of it at the time and they had their own internal tools they were using, which I was not very familiar with. So I ended, up, I ended up just saying, I will learn whatever I can learn and the other things I will learn after I'm going. I just want to have fun. I just want to enjoy San Francisco and learn what I can learn in the short space of time. So it's real about mentorship. It's real about, you know, sharing. In, in fact, it's not just one way. Us, you know, getting all these things from them, getting imparted all this uh, uh, knowledge. It's also about them learning about our, our culture. I remember we had uh, a cultural kickoff night where we were actually showcasing what we do as Zimbabweans. Every country was also doing the same. South Africans were also showcasing their culture. It's like this. So it gives us a platform to interact. It gives us a platform to, to engage, to network. We exchange the conduct. Even up to now, I still have friends from different countries. I'm actually working on that solar project that I was talking about earlier with the, uh, a Kenyan. She's really become like a sister to me. So that's how it is like. Uh, exactly what Bev was explaining just now, that these networks are meant to help us grow. They are meant to be, you know, as, as women, we are supposed to be each other's uh, keeper. We are supposed to be the ones to, you know, pull each other along. All these things. This, this is exactly what is inculcated in us when we go for take women. And the other positive thing that I must mention now is they also give you money, actually. <laughs> A stipend, but it was, I mean, for me, it was like, oh, <laughs> and then you get to, you know, you get to uh, to buy yourself, you know, these goodies, you know, in, in the U.S., even if you go without a cent, you can come back with a bag full of clothes, perfumes, and all that. <laughs> okay, babe, you can come on. <laughs> so, yes, it is a sponsored trip. <laughs> I just want to also add that um, besides tech women, the reason why we're talking about tech women is this is a program we got to participate in, but it's not the only program you can participate in. There are a lot of programs out there that look at mentorship. Some are local, some are international. So it's also about doing some research. But if I'm talking particularly about tech women, just to add, um, it's mentorship and mentorship is not just from the professional angle we we had um, a professional mentor and a cultural mentor so cultural mentor because you're going to the united states it, it's a different environment it's someone to help you assimilate into the culture there and understand i mean i asked my cultural mentor why do i keep seeing people running in the middle of the day it's scorching hot but they are running, right? Uh, it's also just to, to, to integrate yourself into the community and to teach you that life is not just about work, 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 but you need to find a work-life balance. So it's just to give you that work-life balance. And, and like Prudence said, you are attached to a company, you get to learn, but they also get to learn from you. Um, I was at um, San Jose Water District, which uh, is like a water company, I guess, a Zeno equivalent for us here in Zimbabwe. And it was more, they were surprised. How do you speak fluent English? 
I also did a presentation for them and they asked me, how do you guys live in such houses? And I thought, do you think just because I'm African and I'm coming from Zimbabwe, we don't have houses and roads? <laughs> so it's, it's also a way where you get to educate people. Say so it's because their media sometimes exaggerates things, right? So it's an experience not just to learn from the technical, but to learn the cultural, the social, economic. How do you move in a train? How do you stay with someone else? We, we got to share apartments, housing with people from different nationalities and communities. So you make friends, um, you learn food, you, um, there's something I also wanted to mention. Um, I'm, I'm, oh yes, the program. Uh, so when we were uh, allocated companies, it's based on you You select a track. What are you interested in? So STEM is science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Mm -hmm. But say someone is in science, they're interested in clean energy or they're interested in issues of water or um, something like that. You, you, you then, you go to experience based on your interests and likes, right? So it's just a program where you're mentored, you're empowered to build yourself and to also build the next woman, like Prudence said, for you to be your sister's keeper and to keep trying, helping each other to, to move up, you know, move up the ladder and bring someone along with you. It's a great program. Uh, and there are also a lot of great programs out there. So it's not just to say, if you don't experience tech women, you've not experienced mentorship. There are a lot of programs out there. So it's research, find what's within your grasp and your means and yeah, make the most of these programs that are out there for you. Thank you so much. I think after this uh, explanation about Take Me, now I'm very, very, very motivated to apply for it. So definitely I'll be on the lookout. Um, mm -hmm. Engineer Bev and Engineer Providence, you'll be seeing more of me, especially when the Take Women are now recruiting. Um, Rumbi Mutini. I hope you answered. If you've got any more questions, please, um, you can ask. Uh, and there's also a comment from Taro Mango. Go girls, that is true. Mentorship makes it easy. Then uh, there is a comment from Gladys uh, Maposa. On leadership, I also encourage female engineers to take short commercial courses. I think Beverly, uh, you can respond to this one. Maybe they can comment. Over to you. Thanks, Nedi. I totally agree. So it's, well, when you're in school, you are taught the basics because the time is limited and there's so much to cover. They'll give you what ends up being an introduction. The rest is up to you. You need to also put yourself in a position where you're continuously learning. So I definitely agree that you need to augment what you learn in school. And um this includes issues of finances and also building on soft skills. So you find there are some certain skills where you now start thinking, how am I a critical thinker or a problem solver or, a, I don't know, data analyst or something like that. There are some soft skills where you won't learn them in class. Engineer Bev. Can you hear me? Yes, My now we can hear you. On and off, on and off. Okay. All right. I was just saying that we are living in a time where we've got access to internet and access to free courses on the internet. So if you've got your pen nearby, right, look for M -O -O -C -S, MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses. I learned this at Tech Women. <laughs> but yeah. These are courses that are done. You can learn a course from MIT, Harvard, Oxford, or whatever it is, in a skill that will not only help grow you, but it might be useful in your business. It might be useful in growing you as a, um, as a professional, right? But definitely, you need to understand your finances um, because you're either going to manage a business or own the business. In as much as you have an accountant and a finance team, also have some appreciation of what's happening with your money. Otherwise, yeah, you might find to run away with your money or it's just, it's to your advantage to know things. You don't have to be an expert, but an understanding 
definitely is essential to have. Thanks, Nina. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Bev. I hope glad is she were answered. You see, that's why I'm, I'm always holding a pen and having a book somewhere to write. You see, when you're told write this down, it's an opportunity for me to write it down and also like uh, search yeah. more on what was being said. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, Engineer Bev. Um, there's also a comment from Tinashe. Thank you for the response, ladies. I've been answered. I have an idea to go to children's homes and orphanages to hold mini seminars and introductory lessons on STEM subjects to ensure that group is not left out in the drive to improve the science and engineering sector in Zimbabwe. Yeah, uh, well so done, Tinashe. Yeah. And I wish so you all the best. Us. Yeah. Yes. So here's an opportunity to engage engineer Bev. If you want um uh your contacts, you can just feel free to inbox me and I will definitely connect you to Engineer Bev. Then uh there's a comment from Rombi Mucheni. She was actually laughing. Hans, how do you speak fluent English? Wow. <laughs> 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 then uh, the same applies for, um, with Tapiwa and Zerombimchene, really, it's not scientific English. Um, and the last one, it's from Rombimchene, you know, you know, so these guys were now having fun. Um, they're just amazed on how people can be amazed that someone can speak uh, fluent English. Then the last comment is from uh, Lisa Sharon Inchbev, you said which site did you say we should check okay um I, okay i wanted to okay the concept is massive open online courses uh you can go on what's called uh class central class as in c l a s s central they tend to have courses from i think most of the platforms that offer these 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 online courses so you have the likes of what's known as Coursera, edX, uh, Allison, uh, Future, Future Learn. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these platforms, and some of these are supported by say, say you want to do something in IT, right? You want to learn how to code, and MIT is offering that. You can't afford to go to MIT, but you can actually just get a nice certificate from MIT over six weeks, maybe dedicate one hour a day or one hour a week, you do your course near MIT, or you want to learn to understand a bit more about solar, or how do you, just anything. These courses are, are, are on this platform. So if you Google MOOCs, you'll find answers and they'll direct you. If you Google Course Central, sorry, Class Central, you can also pick up uh, a lot from there. So it's also even if you have a particular topic, uh, online course on coding, free online course on coding, you can also pick up who offers those things. So it's now more about um, how well you like playing with Google. Uh, you'll be able to get a lot of answers off Google. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Bev. Uh, thank you so much, Engineer Prudence, for such a detailed presentation and for such an amazing experience uh, on how you are answering questions from our viewers. And to our viewers, thank you so much for tuning in. We've come to the end of today's presentation, and I say happy International Women in Engineering Day. So to Engineer Prudence and Engineer Bev, just 30 seconds, 30, I'll be counting, 30 seconds, just parting words to our viewers. So I'll start with Engineer Bev. Uh, my parting words are, do not be afraid to venture out and do what you want to do. Uh, science, technology, engineering, mathematics is not limited or restricted to anyone. If it's your passion, if it's your dream, go for it. And reach out, there's communities out there. So organizations, like you said, OWSD, STEM Film, we. Engineer Bev. Sorry, my network. 
<laughs> yes, you were you were talking about OWSD. You are still like listing the oh, okay. organizations. Oh, I was just saying there's organizations like OWSD, STEM Fem, WE, WIE, Tech Women Zimbabwe. I don't know if I've left any. If I've left any, you guys can add. But these people are there to help and assist. So my parting words are: do engage us, and let's work this walk this journey together. Over to Engineer Prudence. Thank you very much, uh, Nedi. I would say from my end, um, you know, you are bound to fail sometimes when you try. So never feel like uh, you, you cannot do it again. Even if it means you do it five times, just do it, you know. And the most important thing in life is if there's anything that you want to achieve, start and today is the best day to start. If it means researching, it, if it means, you know, a, just drafting a plan, start today. The moment that you realize this is what I want to do, start it. And then also, as you run your race, stay on your own course. Don't worry about anyone else, okay? Don't worry about who is what. Neji is very good at makeup and all. <laughs> and me, I'm just looking all plain, you know, like this. But this is me and this is Neji. We are two people and it's good. That's how it should be in the world, you know? We are like flowers, different flowers. Some are red, some are pink, some are <laughs> blue, you know? Variegated leaves, all these things. So it's, it's all about you just being you. And don't despise the gen. The gen is very important, okay? No one is just going to, you know, have, you know, that kind of a microwave uh, a kind of thing that just pops like this palm you are there already big bang theory well it doesn't exist you follow the journey okay you have to start and then sometimes you fail all these things are part of life okay so don't ever feel discouraged by failure failure should actually be a way for you to you know to feel like you are you are, you are standing on a springboard you know and the more that it's depressed like this it means when it's released then you can jump so high you know so just be as one who is standing on a springboard. That's what I can encourage you to do. We are open, as you said, as women in engineering. If you want career guidance, advice, or anything, I'm very free. Just come, come over to computer engineering. We can talk. We can discuss. Okay, you are not alone. Leverage those networks. I think that's it from me for now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Engineer Prudent. Thank you so much, Engineer Bev. And uh, from Engineer Magripa, from Wongai, from Tapiwa, from Fadi, from Lois, um, they are just showing their appreciation. They say, thank you, ladies. Uh, I've learned a lot from you amazing engineers. Uh, thank you so much for agreeing to my invitation. I remember Bev, after a very long time, I'm like, Ned, I was still doing this, and you know, you actually reminded me that I needed to continue with this idea because somewhere, somewhere I'd neglected it. So thank you so much, ladies. Um, and once again, happy International Women in Engineering Day. I wish you all the best. And to our viewers, make right choices, make the right decisions. And we'll see you again next week, Wednesday. Same time, same place. Engineer Prudence, Engineer Bev, Thank you so much. And from Ruma Randure, she said, thank you so much. Happy International Women in Engineering Day. Thank you, Neri. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bev, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Neri. Thanks to you, too, Prudem. I hope you can <laughs> invite us again. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> you want around, too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay.